Welcome to DentonRadio.com, powered in part by Classic of Denton. The views and opinions expressed by the show hosts and their guests are those of the show hosts and guests, and not necessarily those of the sponsors, DentonRadio.com, or the Denton Convention and Visitors Bureau. For more information, visit the Policies and Procedures page at DentonRadio.com. Well, hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning in with us here at Denton Radio. On the phones with us, we have got Festival Director Joshua Butler of Thin Line. Uh, they've just wrapped up the virtual festival that all of us got to enjoy over this past week. And, uh, and thank God for it, because I know a lot of us were climbing the walls. How's it going, Josh? I am doing pretty good, Jake. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. Thank you, guys, for, uh, for keeping this festival together. I know a lot of people were worried they weren't going to get to see these docs and and uh, super, super excited that they got to, to enjoy them from the comfort of their own home. So, man, huge props to you guys at Thinline. That was awesome. Cool. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I was, I did not, uh, I was pretty bullish on this idea of having the festival. I mean, a couple weeks before they were canceling big events, but, you know, there was no real concern for small gatherings. Mm -hmm. And I thought, man, all of our venues are small, right? We don't have right. to worry about this. And then, I don't know, I just, I woke up the next morning and uh, something just flipped in my head and I thought, we can't do this. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, had a big board meeting that night and told everyone that we had to consider our options and that uh, everything was on the table. So yeah. um, just went around the went around the room and kind of got every, the poll from everyone, what, what was their thoughts currently, and, and some people... Um, Felt like we should continue, and, and others felt like it was a bad idea, and uh, so we just went kind of piece by piece through the festival and talked about how we could keep it going and whether or not it was going to be a good idea. And unfortunately, music had to go, and we we fought for it for at least an hour in that meeting. You know, how could we make this work? Would it make sense to make it work? Sure. And ultimately, just decided against it. Yeah. Uh, but. We had the ability to do the film uh, online. In fact, we tried to do the online festival thing a couple of years ago. Really? And uh, yeah, we sold a streaming pass. And I think it might have been 17 or 18. We sold a streaming pass for $49. And anything that we had at a uh, campus theater, we live streamed. Cool. So we had like, I don't know, five or six features and some short films. And maybe a half dozen people bought the pass. I mean, those that did loved it, you know. Sure. I heard from them that they got to watch from home, and it was a great experience. We didn't do the live Q&As, though. It's like ah. once the movie was over, it's over. Uh, so we had had that experience, and uh, that kind of helped uh, convince everyone that it was something we could pull off. Mm -hmm. Well, that's awesome, man. Really, really, really cool. So from what we could tell... Uh, it was it was pretty successful. There was a lot of buzz online about it. A lot of people were talking about it. Uh, I mean, I'm, for such a quick pivot, I mean, you guys really put something really incredible together in a very short amount of time. Uh, was it was it what you guys were hoping and expected? I mean, were the numbers good? I didn't know what to expect, and um, and we we have experienced something quite incredible over That's these last awesome. few days. Uh, so great. We had uh, our highest attended festival ever. Awesome. So cool. Yeah. I mean, if we were to count people like we would with the traditional festival, mm -hmm. meaning every person in every chair uh, for a film event or each person that walks into a gallery, then we had over 9,000 Wow. "Quote unquote butts and seats uh, wow. for the film festival, and uh, over five thousand people through our photo gallery. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, it was it was pretty crazy seeing the numbers tick up, and we got some really good press uh, because Susan, our our film mm -hmm. program uh, director, did an amazing job this year. Susan Davis, in fact, yeah. she's got a show coming up this weekend." Uh, Oh, uh, what is it for Artist Enclave? Something oh, yeah. It. Exhibition. Yeah, so everyone check that out. Uh, but she somehow got this movie, Cowboys, which had uh, premiered at the Lone Star Film Festival in November. 
Uh-huh. And uh, they were doing a really limited festival run, so there weren't many places this could be seen. And uh-huh. because we were putting it online and for free, uh, there was some hesitation from the filmmaker, honestly. It, 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 took, <laughs> it took many back and forth. And this was a big piece of this. We had to negotiate with every single filmmaker, yeah. getting permission to go online. And some people wanted restrictions. And we added watermarks to some content. Some people wanted U.S. only. Some people wanted Texas only. Some people wanted a quantity limit. Wow. So we really had to be sensitive to all of these uh, situations. And we still lost seven or eight films. Wow. But this one in particular, they uh, they decided kind of internally that they were going to let this go. And wow. they wanted as many people to see it as possible. And so they really got behind the press effort and made themselves available for um, for interviews. And then... Uh, we got picked up by Cowboys and Indians magazine, which pushed it out to their national uh, cool. kind of list. And from then, like the numbers just kind of went kind of through the roof for those two screenings. We showed it once on Saturday, once on Sunday. And the Saturday event had uh, 1,800 people sign up for it. Wow. And then the event on Sunday had 2,300 people. Amazing. So, That's incredible. So I was, that was our single largest attended event ever for Thin Line. And uh, it wow. was that film and 2,300 people. That is so cool. Well, going forward in future years, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of debate and a lot of conversation, so we may not even be able to answer this. But, I mean, is this something that's being considered as an addition to the, the, the fest, like the physical festival you'll have, and then also the ability to watch online? Or is this a, a one-time thing? And then again, we may not know yet. So. Yeah, and, and one that will continue with us throughout the year. I mean, clearly, sure. two months ago, none of us knew we'd be in this situation. Right. <laughs> so uh, times are changing, and they're changing pretty quick. Uh, yeah. But I think I can see a, a future where this does continue. Um, there are a lot of costs involved, and there's mm. a lot of it's essentially a live production, right? We were showing all these movies live, and we were bringing in all these guests live, and doing all these Q and A's live. And so it was a live production, and that took a lot of resources. Uh, and streaming is not free, you know. Yeah. So it, it definitely came with its own costs. And thank you to all the sponsors that didn't pull their money, because otherwise <laughs> we wouldn't have been able to do it. Right. Um, so I would like to, but I also think the there's so much invested in this um, the the standard process of releasing films, you mm-hmm. know, whether it be theater distribution to streaming. There's so much money and there's so many people involved in that process sure. that, uh, you know, the only reason that these filmmakers, I think, were willing to kind of give up on that standard process is because that standard process does not currently exist. Right. And if, if, if we come out of this and things kind of get back to normal, quote unquote, then the filmmakers are going to withhold streaming rights. Sure. And they're, they're not going to agree to do this again. So... Um, I would love to keep it going, and I think we'll try and do something similar, you know, keep some streaming going, but who knows? It's really up to the content. If we don't get permission to show the films, then there's nothing much we can do. Sure. But I think for the photo, uh, the photo was wildly successful, right? And uh, we we introduced this uh, audience award so people could vote for their favorite uh, photographs. Cool. And we registered um, like over 15,000 votes. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so I would, and you know, kind of crazy. Ten percent of our uh, photo gallery attendance came from India. I mean, we we became this global festival uh, over a period of two weeks. And, so cool. Um, of course, I'd like to keep some of that going. Yeah, yeah, big time, big time. Well, that's awesome, man. Now you you mentioned it uh, briefly, but. Part of the reason why all of this was still able to be available was because you had some awesome sponsors uh, that support you guys uh, through all of this and, and make it available for all of us that are enjoying it at home. It, are there any sponsors you'd like to give some shout-outs to? Um, I mean, the big cash ones are, are crucial to this whole thing happening, and that was Texas Women's University and Radical Hospitality Group. Um, and Radical's been hit hard, right? Just like all the sure. service industry has, all of these restaurants are closed, uh, all these bars are closed. Um, so they stuck with us despite 
uh, all of that. That's and awesome. maybe it was a timing thing, um, but I know that they care about uh, the community. So um, definitely anxious to get back to uh, visiting them when we can. Yeah. And then, I mean, all the music venues, you know, we were hoping when we canceled the music venue, the, the idea was, okay, we're going to let the venues decide if they want to continue these shows. And a lot of them ha- just, uh, were going to, right? They were yeah. still going to do something. Uh, but then, of course, we got the, the full shutdown notice, mm-hmm. and, and they weren't allowed to. So I think those places took a heavy hit, and, and most of them uh, kind of stuck with us. And, and actually, it really did surprise me, the small businesses that – you know, despite being closed, we're like, eat my money, right? Like yeah. recycle books and, you know, tie, um, on the square Wow. and, um, just a number of these local small businesses that, you know, are hurting, you know, need the money sure. wine squared. Uh, and, and yet they, intentionally said you can keep it we support you so cool. uh, and and really that that was these businesses deciding you know what we're going to enable this to happen filmmakers probably weren't going to come to the festival if we had it in person right we mm-hmm. can afford to bring maybe one or two filmmakers from overseas uh and then maybe one or two more have the funds themselves to do it but you know, we're definitely not the place where we can bring in 20, 30 filmmakers from around the world. And yet that's what we were able to do this year. And in some situations we had a filmmaker from Germany and one from Austria and one in Brazil and one in Scotland and sometimes all the same call. So cool. (laughs) That's so cool. uh, You know, I think people were able to feel kind of connected in this live engagement way and uh, you know, I think we all felt it was going to be important to continue this and to you know still be able to engage with our community this way. I love that. Super, super, super cool. Well, Joshua, thank you. Hats off to you and your whole team and everybody for for keeping this together and having it be like you said a, a bright spot to to the past three weeks or so where people had something cool to get to do and be a part of and we could still uh, have community and talk to each other through it and everything. It was just, it was really, really cool thing and a, and a fun experience to watch and to be a part of. And, and so hats off to all of you guys. Is there anything else we want to touch on before we wrap up? Yeah, actually, we're going to do it all again uh, this weekend. Really? Yeah. So, you know, we have been partnering more and more with the Dallas Video Fest and mm-hmm. they, their next festival is called All Fiction. And it is a, uh, a narrative festival. And uh, they have, of course, canceled and are moving online to the same platform that Finline used. And we're going to be helping them uh, operate their festival event. So it's going to work exactly the same, same platform, live intros, live Q&As, filmmakers from around the world, uh, a lot of great indie content. It starts on Thursday, goes through Sunday. Super cool. That's awesome. All right, everybody. You got something else to get to do this coming week. Check it all out. That is super. And who are you partnering with again? It's the Dallas Video Fest. Dallas and Video their, Fest. Their next fiction is called Alt Fiction. Alt so Fiction. Dallas Video Fest, Alt Fiction. Perfect. Man, super, super cool. Joshua, thank you again for making the time to be here with us today. Really do appreciate it. Again, hats off to you and your entire team. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in and watching with us. Stay tuned right here at DentonRadio.com. Well, thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the show. We want to thank our partners and sponsors who made this show possible. And now stick around for a word from all of us here at Discover Dent. Denton, Texas, where your next great experience awaits. In these unexpected times, your health and safety is our number one concern. This will not last forever, but for now, we send you love from afar. It may not be tomorrow, but as soon as you are able, we look forward to having you visit. Denton's music, food, art, and community will be waiting right here, ready to greet you. Stay safe, we wish you the best wherever you are, and we will see you as soon as we can in Denton, Texas.